Hi everybody. Uh, it is uh, April 5th, 2010, and uh, I am uh, having some technological issues, some technical issues I should say, and they are relating to technology. And that is, um, I'm having a really hard time with this Kodak ZI-8 uh, in terms of getting myself in frame for this sort of video blogging. And uh, that's not a, a uh, general criticism of this device. Um, I don't think it's really built for video blogging the way um, the way uh, something like um, like a built-in camera, like an iSight, would 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 be. Um, it's uh, it's not that easy to shoot oneself in this wide aspect. And um, I've actually made a couple of um, this uh, versions of this blog video. And uh, I had to trash them because in one I was filmed from here up and the other I was sort of filmed from here down and I was constantly getting out of frame and it looked ridiculous. So, so I'm trying, um, I'm going to try this again uh, and I'm far from the microphone which makes the sound not as good as if I were, were seated closer to it. Uh, but I'm not unhappy with this camera. I mean, I think it's going to have great, great uh, usefulness when, I, when I'm traveling. And um, I'm looking forward to making lots of films when I'm uh, traveling to Europe later this month. And um, I also have to say I love the expandable memory that this has, that this device has, the Kodak device has, that the uh, Flip HD does not. The Flip HD only has built-in memory, and I think it's something like two gigabytes or four gigabytes. I have a 16 16 gig card in here now, a 16 gig SDHC card that gives me something like four hours and 20 minutes of 720p 20 24 frames per second high definition video. That's the setting I have now, over four hours. If I want to shoot in WVGA then it's something like 6 hours and 40 minutes of video. So that's a really nice thing about this camera. But like I say, when it comes to filming myself in this environment, it's challenging. But I guess there's a learning curve with any technology, which is, which is fine. Um, now, today uh, I, noticed, uh, I noticed a flower in my garden. It's April 5th, and there was a crocus. Um, the only crocus I've been able to find in my property and here it is I hope I hope that that's in in frame um, beautiful yellow crocus really welcome sign that springs and pending and imminent and the world's renewing and that's really nice um, I did some other gardening uh, over the over the long weekend um, I actually removed a couple of unruly rose bushes not a couple three three of seven unruly rose bushes on our property coming to terms with this idea that we've been here for five years so why can't we change some things around with regard to plants and landscaping I mean the people who lived here before did a lot of work and that's um, that's neat I'm, I'm I, I, I respect their gardening acumen but I lack it and Brian has no interest in gardening and so yeah I got rid of some rose bushes and I'm really happy to have done it now to, to to move away from the talk about the the natural world world and organic topics, I want to talk a little bit more about technology because I'm really excited to talk about the Skype application that I have on my Nokia E71 phone, and I'm gonna um, start it up and show you the Skype splash screen. So that is the Skype opening screen. And um, so this isn't Skype Lite. This isn't a proprietary version uh, that that is is uh, less than a computer desktop version. This is uh, this is a full fledged version of Skype. And what I mean by that is that I have the capacity to connect to Skype via either Wi-Fi or 3G. Now you think I would want to use Wi-Fi, and that was my expectation too. I have a dedicated Skype phone that I bought at Future Shop, the Canadian version of, of Best Buy or Circuit City or whatever. It's called Future Shop. And I bought, I bought a dedicated Skype phone uh, from Future Shop that connects to our houses, our, our homes, a Wi-Fi network. 
um, and then connects to Skype. And it's terrible. The call quality is so bad that I would describe this phone as worthless. It's the Belkin Skype phone and it's terrible. Um, so I tried connecting via Wi-Fi on this phone. This phone is a smartphone and it has, it's, it's a 3G plus it's, it also has a Wi-Fi connectivity. Same problem. Terrible, terrible sound. So I found that if I connected, I'm a Rogers customer, and so when I'm asked to choose an access point, my 3G network options are Go Rogers, Rogers Email, Rogers Internet, and Rogers Media. I choose Rogers Internet because trial and error has shown me that um, that's the, the best network for making Skype calls. So when I connect to it, it, um, it asks me to sign in. Then I get a connection warning telling, warning me about data usage and how 3G connections, that, that using Skype in a 3G connection will use a lot of data. And then I say OK, and then we get this sound, which some of you will recognize. There it goes. The Skype, uh, the Skype startup sound. And now my phone is populated with all my Skype contacts. Now I can call any of them um, because I have Skype out. I pay about $3 Canadian a month for unlimited uh, North American calls to not only Skype users, that's always free, but also to landlines, or I can dial a number. Today, I dialed a number to Saudi Arabia because Brian is in Saudi Arabia for another two days. He is then on his way to Turkey for five days. He'll be in Istanbul for five days. And he's got an unlocked phone with a Saudi Arabian SIM card in it. And I called him on it today. And the sound quality was beautiful, perfect. It was just like talking on a regular phone. In fact, better than our previous attempts using regular, using, uh, regular cell connections. Going through Skype with the, uh, on 3G, beautiful. Um, killer app, in fact, I would say. I'm so, I'm so happy about this. Now, I have two caveats about this experience. One is that you need the paid account. You can't make Skype calls for free to landlines or to cell phones unless you have this plan called Skype Out. I have the North American plan, which gives me free calls in Canada and in the United States, but um, I have to pay for calls outside of those regions. For me, that was 30 cents a minute Canadian, which is still a very good price. So an uh, eight minute call cost me about $2.40 of Skype credit, uh, not a, which is not bad, as I say, but you have to have a Skype out plan in order, in order to partake of it. The second thing, and I'm, I'm actually tickled with schadenfreude to say this, but Americans don't have access to this, at least not for, for Nokia. If you go to the Ovi, Ovi store, Nokia's app store, and you're American in the States and you try to purchase, or try, it's not purchase, it's a free download. You try to get Skype for, for, uh, for Nokia. Uh, you can't get it. It's not available to Americans. It's only available outside of America. So you have the iPad first, you have the iPhone for a, something like a year before Canadians had it. You've got a much better iTunes store than we do. You have Hulu.com. You have video streaming that you can't access when you're outside of the United States. But for once, for once, customers outside of the U.S., including Canadians, have access to something that Americans don't. I hope you do. I hope you do. And I hope that whatever phone you have, if you have a Skype application for it, that it, it allows you to have 3G access because that's where the money is. By which I mean, that's where the rewards are. So that's uh, a boring te technology update, but you know, sometimes technology is worth getting excited about. And when it comes to facilitating us to connect with people we love, then bravo technology. So we'll see you guys next time.